Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be me sharing my updated top 10 foundations ranked from worst to better, well, not really worst, from like amazing to phenomenal. My top 10 foundations ranked coming up. Let's get started. Can you tell it's Monday? I am energized. I'm ready to face the week. I'm full of beans. I've had three coffees is the reality. So I was recently watching or not watching because I cannot stand watching my own face on the screen. Can't bear it. Can't listen to my own voice. All horrifying experiences but I was having a look at my last the last time I did this video which was almost two years ago can you Adam and Eve it awful why have I not done this I like to do these sorts of videos like yearly I like to do like my top three my holy grails my favorite this my favorite that yearly I've slacked off when it comes to this video and I don't know why it's just time goes so quickly you know what I mean. I thought I did this about a year ago, but it turns out it was two years ago. So I can only apologize. But I was looking at it because I was just curious. I know a lot of new foundations came out in the last couple of years. And I wanted to look back and see how I'd ranked my top 10 and have a like little think about what had changed. And I was shocked because I forgot about a foundation and it was the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin, which in that video two years ago was in second place or was it third? I can't remember. But it was very highly ranked in that video and I was shocked because this isn't wasn't in my top drawer anymore. I'd forgotten about it. I haven't used it for months and months and months, maybe even, a, I can't remember, I don't wanna say a year, that seems ridiculous, but I haven't used it for a very long time. And so I went back and revisited it because I thought, what's happening? And I couldn't really remember what it was like. And I've barely put another foundation on my face since. And I've been going back and forth and really trying to think about the newer foundations. What else have I forgotten? And here today, I'm ready to share with you what I came up with. My ranking, I went through my top drawer of foundations where I keep all of my favorites. I also went through all of my other drawers of foundations just in case there's anything else I've forgotten about. And here we have the top 10 and I'm going to be ranking it for you today. Quick disclaimer, okay. I've said this to you before and I'll say it again. There isn't always perfect ranking. There isn't always a number one favorite. There isn't always a winner. A lot of the time, I know everybody who is a normal person and not a maniac who has to buy hundreds of everything all of the time. You're a normal person. You want one, okay? You want to know what is the best, what is the top, and I get a lot of questions, which do you prefer, this or this? And the reality is there's not always a straight answer. Sometimes things are the same or as good as each other or I like them equally and that's just how it is. Also sometimes I go back and forth, I change my mind about things depending on the day, on the occasion, there might be a slightly different order. So this order is not set in stone, okay? I'm not going to go to jail if a couple of them swap around in a few months time. That's the nature of makeup. Your skin changes throughout the year. How foundations particularly wear throughout the year changes. What I favor depending on the occasion changes. So take all of this with a pinch of salt. I'm gonna explain my ranking as best as I can. This is as solid of an order as it can get, but it is always subject to change. So don't hold a gun to my head. That would be unfair and a, a bit much, you know, for foundation. Little bit of info before we get started. I always have my foundation, my best foundation shade matches listed in the description box. Winter shade and summer shade, I change drastically between those two extremes and then the rest of the months, I'm somewhere in between those two places. I have a normal skin type, mostly I am 40 years old now. I have early signs of aging and texture like anybody, but my skin doesn't have any like real issues. I'm not especially oily, I'm not especially dry, I don't have any sensitivities or allergies to any ingredients. I live in a very mild climate, 
and my preference is for a very natural looking but solid medium coverage with a very glowy glorious finish that wears decently well as i've said before i'm not someone working 14 hour shifts grinding it out okay i barely move throughout the day in my job. So I don't really require 14 hours of perfect wear, okay? If my foundation is hanging on decently well at eight hours, I'm happy. Having said that, I'm in a mild climate. I have a very easy going skin type and therefore any of these foundations I expect foundations to wear immaculately on me because if they can't do it on me in England, how on earth would they ever do it on someone with like a combo skin type living in Vegas, like Miami, the desert? You know what I'm saying? So there you have it. That is all of the pre-warnings and info. Let's kick off with 10th place. We have the Tom Ford Stick Foundation. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it that she's got a stick of any variety in her top drawers. I can't believe it, can you? If you're not new here, you'll know I'm allergic to sticks. I hate them. I don't like sticks. I don't like stick bronzers, sticks, twigs, any kind of stick. I'm not a big fan. It's just the application method. What I will say is that this little stick has taught me how great they are for travel, okay? This is really the only foundation I will ever take if I'm traveling, if I'm going on holiday, if I'm going somewhere and I want to keep the smallest amount of makeup and it to be, you know, non-breakable, non-shattering, very, compact this is what i go for this is all i take when i go on holiday because it is so convenient but the reason this is lower down is because i just i'm not a fan of like using a stick and the application process of it all i'd much rather a liquid that's just my personal preference when it comes to a texture that being said this is my favorite stick that i've ever met in real life i do find it very easy to blend i tend to like whack a few stripes on blend and then add a little more wherever there's still redness discoloration this has such a pretty finish to it very glowy but not in a wet way it doesn't look shiny or sticky or greasy it just looks luminous it's very smoothing it's very easy to use you don't necessarily need a tool i've told you before i can't touch things with my hands i hate it i can't be doing no i you would never see me doing that i hate even the thought of it is making me cringe inside i don't like it but if you are not a massive loony you could just literally take this touch ups you know you could just use your hands and you wouldn't even need a brush and it would probably be less disgusting than a liquid so that's got lots of pros for traveling it wears amazingly well it's probably the one one of two that I would recommend for you know sunny hot weather I said this before whenever anyone asks me what base product would you recommend for a really hot humid day I would recommend this this is the one I always take on holiday with me if I'm going to be out and it's still going to be hot and I want to wear makeup which is a rare occasion then this would be the one because I know it holds up well under humidity under heat it's very easy to take with you in a handbag if you did want to do some touch-ups it's really really nice solid perfect for travel option it can't be any higher because i can barely stomach to use a stick at the best of times now in ninth place we have a new entry it is the Boutin liquid foundation probably possibly the most glorious bottle we are going to see today this foundation is it's so good it's such a great foundation it seems like it's low down but the reason for that is just my personal preferences when it comes to foundations this is too matte to be any higher okay as i said at the beginning i am a glowy girl i love glowy glorious skin i love a healthy glow and luminosity to my skin so as much as i think this is an amazing foundation it's never going to be you know my top two or three just because it is more matte it is also the highest coverage foundation i've ever used it has such high coverage which if i want to go all in i want to look like a barbie doll full glam full beat that works 
This is probably the one I'm going to reach for. It wears incredibly well. It photographs beautifully. It has insane coverage, but it never looks heavy, cakey, makeup-y. It still manages to cover everything very, very well and still maintain a skin-like quality. It is matte and it is more matte than what I would typically reach for or prefer, but it does have life and like a hint of luminosity to that matte finish. It's not a flat, dusty, dry, dead looking matte because I don't have, like I said, a lot of oil to my skin to help those types of foundations. So it will just stay as, as it goes on. And that is too matte to be any higher, but wow, when I'm in the mood for like a full kapow look and I want all the coverage and I don't mind a matte finish, I want something that's gonna wear very, very well, Photo photograph very, very well because it doesn't have SPF in it either. Evening events, it would be an excellent choice. If you have a bit more of a natural glow to your skin, you'll probably like it even more. It's beautiful, flawless, very flattering, just doesn't quite tick my boxes, which it, it's similar to, it's not similar to the Tom Paul stick, but it has a similar reason why. These are both great foundations, but my personal preferences are stopping them going any higher up the ladder. You see what I'm saying. Now in eighth place, one that might be quite surprising to you because it has been much higher in the past, it's the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation. Look at the state of it. You can tell this is a very well used and loved foundation. And although this seems like it's kind of low down the ranking, this is one that I use very regularly, very frequently, and I really enjoy. It's quite full coverage for me. It has the perfect amount of glow it doesn't wear quite as well as some of these others that are coming up behind it which is the only reason why it's slightly lower down than some of the others but this is an absolute love foundation for me I have excellent shades and undertones in NARS foundations winter and summer I always have a great shade match and in fact multiple shades that I can make work for me which is really really great if I want something full coverage easy going and glowy and it's going to wear a decent amount of time but it's not necessarily a long wearing foundation if I don't set it this is just a staple for me it's not like especially unbelievably wow factor but it is so reliable and solid standard you know medium to full beat glowy foundation this is you know it does exactly what it says on the tin I've never had any issues with it I always like how my skin looks with it and it is one that I have used a lot I'm literally about to run out of one bottle I have this in multiple shades and they are all this one is my winter shade Patagonia it's down to about here I would definitely use this up. I would repurchase it. It's one that is a real workhorse for me. I said it in my more recent top five foundations video, but these two, the Chanel number no. one and the NARS Light Reflecting are basically in the same spot. I kind of swap them around back and forth, back and forth. And these days I'm leaning more so towards the NARS than the Chanel, but they are, very neck and neck they're very similar beasts the chanel number no. one is in seventh place it has been kicked out of my top five you can see how much i've used this this one is about to be finished and i've already used up one bottle so this is the other shade that i have and i have loved and got a lot of use out of this foundation these two are similar the chanel is not quite as glowy and it has a bit less coverage so it's a little bit more natural i feel like the nars looks a bit more like makeup, the Chanel, I mean, obviously it doesn't look like you haven't got makeup on, but it's a little less, it's a little more natural because it has that lighter coverage and it's a little less glowy, a bit more of a natural glow, more of a medium coverage, wears decently, again, not a long wearing foundation for me, but wears decently to like the eight hour mark with some minor fading and signs of wear but again a really nice foundation I don't have as good shades in Chanel that's always a little bit of a struggle for me which again kind of brings it down but this is so flattering and smooth on texture on fine lines it's flawless really really beautiful really natural a gorgeous foundation and now in sixth place a new entry for me one that you probably haven't 
heard me talk about a lot on my channel. And the reason being that it has taken me a very unusually long amount of time to really discover my feelings about this one, but it is the Le Mer Soft Fluid Foundation. I have had a strange little journey with this specific foundation. I picked up a sample at the airport of this years ago, can't remember how long, I think it was, we're talking like five, six years ago, at least I would say. I picked up a sample at the airport and I just used it a few times on my holidays and I didn't love it. I can't really remember why I didn't love it. I just wasn't wowed by it. It's obviously very expensive. I just thought it was okay, but obviously I was trying it on holiday. I don't know if I was using primer. I don't know if it was the weather over there or I just didn't have my usual products, my usual mirror to really compare and see everything. I don't know what it was, but I didn't fall in love with it. I never purchased it. I just sort of wrote it off, didn't wow me, that was that. And then I started getting bored last year. There were not many new foundations coming out that I was interested in picking up and I wanted to try some more foundations. I asked you guys, what foundations should I try that are already out there that you think I would love? And a lot of people said this one. And I thought, you know what? I never really gave it the old college try. I never really gave it a proper go because I was on holiday. I didn't have my usual routine. Let's give it a second go. And I did. And over time, it has really been a grower on me. Okay. Again, I used it a few times initially and I thought it was nice. I wasn't wowed by it, but I kept coming back to it. And what I found recently is I will apply this foundation. The first issue is the shades. I can't, I, for the life of me, I cannot find a great winter shade for me. If you have a suggestion, tell me. I've got the shade neutral. In summer, I use the shade tan and that's much better. This shade, the undertone is just a little bit off, but I'm around, I'm around that shade, but the undertone, something is wrong. <laughs> I don't know what. It could just be that the shade range in this foundation is not very good, which is more than likely being Le Mer. So that slightly, you know, puts it a little down because if I can't find a really good shade, it's always going to stop me loving a foundation. I think what happens, my mixed feelings about this one, is I will apply this, do my makeup, and I'll be looking in the mirror thinking, it looks okay, I'm not loving it, it's not super glowy, so it's not typically what I'm used to. It's a sort of me lighter end of medium amount of coverage. It's very thin, which I do like. It really evens out skin tone very, very well. And it is in all senses of the word, the most natural foundation that I own. It's not a super light sheer coverage, but the finish of it, the appearance, everything about the texture of this foundation is so beautifully natural and it is so polished. That is the perfect word to describe this foundation. And isn't that what you'd expect from a Le Mer foundation? That it gives you polished skin. It looks very professional, polished, sophisticated, mature to me. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but that's how it looks. And that's how I feel when I'm wearing it. What I have found about this is that when I'm applying it, I'm thinking, sure, it looks okay. When I look in a mirror throughout the day, however, every time I'm like, oh, wow. Throughout the day and from like, you know, a foot away, you know, cause I do my makeup like here, like I'm blind. Um, even though I'm actually not, surprisingly. But I like to be close up when I'm doing my makeup. You know, I have a big mirror, close up mirror, lots of lights going on. And under those conditions, it just like doesn't, it just doesn't shine. And then I'll get out in like the natural daylight, I'll look in my car mirror, or maybe I'll look in, you know, our hallway mirror as I'm leaving. And I'm like, looks so good. If I go to the ladies throughout the day, I'll look in a mirror and be like, it looks so good. And that's what is weird about this foundation is I feel like when I'm applying it, I'm like, sure, fine. And then it's like, as the day goes along, I start to love it and I really appreciate how naturally beautiful it makes me feel. It just looks like so natural, so flattering. It does wear very, very well. And this is the other one that I would say along with the stick would be a recommendation for hot weather, for humidity, for holiday. It wears really, really well in high temperatures and it's just easy going. 
and understated. It's super beautiful. I'm still kind of working out what is going on and why I don't love it so much when I'm like doing my makeup as I do when I check it out throughout the day. But there's something very special about the finish. It's very natural, very flattering, perfect for mature skin. If you can find a great shade, you probably love it even more than me. And now we enter the top five and I'm pretty sure you will be familiar with all of these if you've ever been here before in your life. In fifth place, we have the Hourglass Soft Glow Foundation. You can see from that bottle how much I love this one. This is my go-to evening or event foundation. I absolutely love this one. It's so beautiful. It's flawless. It's full coverage, not quite as full coverage as the Louboutin, but a close second when it comes to, like, this is a normal full coverage, like an average full coverage. This is like unhinged coverage, you know? Like you know, like not a single drop of humanity is left to see. This is a more, standard classic full coverage and yes again it's a matte foundation on paper but this is a very luminous soft matte very natural matte finish gorgeous finish very very smooth very flattering wears amazingly well photographs unbelievably well if i'm going out in the evening there's going to be flash photography if i'm going to a wedding if i'm going to event an event if I'm going to event, if I'm going to an event. This is what I'm wearing, but I also love it and wear it frequently for a more matte foundation. That is unheard of in this house. On just an average day when I want to look more made up, it is a full beat kind of glam look and I'm here for it a lot of the time. It looks great on camera, very flattering an absolute favorite staple. I'm almost done with my bottle and it will be immediately repurchased. Again, I've got several shades of this and yet I'm still using them up. A sign of true love if ever I heard one. And now for the top four. All four of these are absolute loves of my life. I love them all. There are just slight little nuances that allows me in any way to put them in an order. But like I said, take it with a pinch of salt because all of these are absolute loves and treasures and delights. Fourth place, it's the Prada Beauty. And honestly, it could be higher on a different day with a different mood in my heart. I love the bottle. I love that it is refillable. I have really nice shades in this foundation and it is so beautiful. This isn't glowy necessarily. It's a luminous natural sort of satin finish. So it's not as glowy as the NARS. It's probably a similar finish to the Chanel, more glowy than the Hourglass and the Le Mer by a little bit, but not quite as glowy as the NARS and some of the others. And all three, in fact, of the others that are still to come. Hence why it's not quite got into like the top couple of places because I do like things typically a hair glowier than this, but a gorgeous classy finish for a foundation if that's possible, similarly to the Le Mer. Very refined, elegant, smooth, not too loud in lots of ways, very natural finish on the skin, lighter as far as the coverage, but also as far as the feel of it, it's a very lightweight, thinner foundation, feels very lightweight on the skin, wears very, very well, photographs beautifully, again, could be a gorgeous evening foundation or event foundation. It's so flattering and refined on the skin, very good with texture, problem areas, the muzzle zone, beautiful shades and undertones for me as well, which I really appreciate, and a really nice, gorgeous natural medium amount of coverage. It's a beautiful foundation. In third place, it's the House Labs. Again, touch and go. I could have easily changed reverse this order. I love both of these very much. They are quite different though. I love this bottle as well though. Really beautiful frosted glass. The House Labs is like a medium but you can easily get a full out of it. Really gorgeously glowy foundation. These are quite similar. I'd say the House Labs has a hair less coverage and is maybe a hair glowier than the NARS. Not by much, very similar in coverage. I just love the finish of this one. I love that they have 
olive shades and I would say that this probably wears a bit better as well than the NARS. It's a gorgeous foundation. Whenever I wear this, I just love how healthy and glowy and plump and fresh my skin looks. It's got such a gorgeous glowy finish to it, exactly what I look for. A really nice amount of coverage that still never looks or feels cakey and heavy great undertones and shades to choose from love that we've got olive shades in this foundation to choose from it's just a beautiful healthy glowy just had a facial skin type of foundation exactly what i prefer and what i live for and now we finally come to that foundation that i forgot about <laughs> well, what were we doing it's the charlotte tilbury beautiful skin foundation in second place who would have thought it? She's gone straight back in where she was a couple of years ago, which is impressive, especially as I'm so sorry I forgot about you. I don't know what happened. I do know what happened. What happened is I have too much makeup. I have too many foundations. Also, a lot of these in this top 10 are either new and came out since this one, after this one, or were new to me and I tried after this one. So I think I just didn't have time to go back to it, kept on using all of these new foundations, testing them, reviewing them, and I forgot how much I loved it. When I picked this back up, I was like, I love this foundation. It's so beautiful. It's the perfect solid medium coverage, the perfect amount of glowy finish, just the gorgeous, healthy, glowy skin, exactly what you would expect from a Charlotte Tilbury foundation. This is Charlotte Tilbury skin in a bottle. I love the undertones of her foundation. She's again one who does olive undertones quite well. There's never enough of them, but I do find the olive undertones that are available are really natural, well done olive undertones. I love that this is also very travel friendly, being a tube and not a glass bottle. It doesn't feel as luxurious, but it is then easier to pack and easier to travel with. So there's kind of pros and cons when it comes to that. But this is one that now I've remembered it exists, will be getting a lot more use again out of me. I really fell back in love with it. The first time I put this back on my face, I was like, I don't wanna use anything else now. Again, this has no SPF in it, so it's perfect for events. It's perfect if you're going on a night out and you're gonna have flash photos or a lot of light. I think it's absolutely stunning. Such a fresh, juicy, youthful, look to the foundation, really flattering, wears solidly well for eight hours, well and truly back in my life at this point. Oh, and by the way, every single foundation in this lineup has a pump, except for obviously the Tom Ford stick, so you know how I feel about pumps, clearly. You can't make it into my favourite foundations without a pump, all right? None of those doe foot crazy looking things around here. Thank you. And so we finally arrive at the top spot. And in case you thought there was going to be a different number one for 2024, there isn't. She's still going strong. The Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate. Oh, we have had a very long and strong love affair at this point. She does have a broken cap. Very sadly, she has sustained an injury but still one of the most glorious bottles I've ever seen in my life. This has been my favorite foundation for years now and nothing has changed. I've treasured her, I love it. Every time I start to think I have found a foundation to rival it, I've been testing out a new one and I've been really loving it and thinking, do I love this more than the shade and illuminate? Have we got a new champion of foundation? I'll go back and use this. And every time I'm like, I put this on, I'm like, no. The thing about this foundation is, it just makes me feel my most beautiful. I put it on this morning and I was like, yeah, she's still got it. Not me, the foundation, although I've still got it too. It's the finish. There's something special and just perfect for me when it comes to the finish of this foundation. It just is angel skin. I've said it about this foundation a hundred times. I don't know if you know what that means, but my skin looks angelic. It just makes me feel my most authentically, naturally beautiful. And that is what I really want from a foundation. Forget all this other stuff, wear time, 
I don't know what else I've been rambling on about, to be honest. But what I want my foundation to do for me is to make me feel my most beautiful, but still myself. And that's exactly what this does. It's so stunningly natural, but like the most perfect skin on earth is just your own, you know? So gorgeous, fresh, glowy, healthy, juicy, plump, texture where we don't know her but still that healthy glow unlike many foundations this foundation starts off perfect as far as the finish and it stays exactly there for a solid eight nine hours without being set it does have a really high spf that's the one thing i would change about it it has spf 50 that's the one thing that could potentially have this knocked off top spot because if this formula came along spf free it would be the answer to all my prayers and half price because it is an insanely expensive foundation. I never pay full price for it. I'm always looking for a cheeky discount, at least 20% off, you can always find it. And I would, if I were you. Because she is expensive, but sadly I've never found a foundation to knock her off top spot. So to me, it is worth it. A bottle will last me a, you know, a year solidly. And I just love her. She's got a beautiful fragrance, but it's not, overwhelming overpowering like I can't breathe it's a, just a nice enjoyable fragrance to me it's a really lovely thin watery light texture that I like and I really prefer using a tiny amount of this foundation and it completely evens out my skin tone my redness everything gets evened out but with a really thin layer so it just looks so like you can really still see skin you know with a light to medium coverage this foundation builds to about a medium but starts off a light to medium but has this incredibly effective evening quality to it and the finish is like i said just the chef's kiss about this foundation and it just wears gorgeously for such a beautifully luminous foundation as well i have great shades in tom ford great undertones really really natural tones to a lot of their shades, which I really, really enjoy. There's just nothing I dislike about it. The SPF could be a little inconvenient, but other than that, it's just the most beautiful foundation that really just is exactly how I want my skin to look. So there you have it. Those are my top 10 foundations in their current ranking spots. Did anything surprise you? I feel like there are a few surprises this time around with the Forgotten Foundation and some of these new entries. Let me know all of your thoughts and let me know what is your current number one foundation. Is there a foundation still that you think I haven't tried that I would love? Let me know. There must be one. I'm really hoping for some new foundations this year. I feel like as much as I've loved the Tom Ford, there's no loyalty there, okay? At that expensive a foundation, I would love to find a normally priced luxury foundation that could knock it off top spot and doesn't contain SPF. Let's pray that this is the year because it's been long enough. It's been hogging top spot. It's been, it's time to go, okay? I <laughs> just, it's not happened yet. So please let me know your recommendations in the comments section down below. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And I would love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.